So I bought this Tormach back in 2015 sometime. And from January 2016 until now, it's April 2024, this thing's run between 25 and 35 hours a week, every week, for the past eight years or so. And I got no complaints. It's, uh, for what it is, it's been paying the bills for the last eight years. And uh, it has definitely earned its keep. But the problem I'm having is twofold, actually. Um, one, I'll just share it with you, is I think I'm starting to wear out the Y-axis uh, ways. And the reason I say that is... I don't know how well you can see that. But that's even before the machine's warmed up and everything's nice and slick and lubed and everything. And I've already put about 40 thousandths worth of shim in there. In stages. Six thousandths here, another six, you know, all the way up. Um, but that's okay. I can keep shimming that out until there's, until there's no... Um, What's that thing that goes in there? You know what I'm talking about. The tapered to gib. Till there's no gib left. I can keep shimming that out till there's no gib left. Uh, and then I'll worry about that. Because I don't think there's really anything I can do about it. Right now, the most pressing concern is this. And you can hear it. If you hear, let me do the Z first. Sounds pretty normal. The X. Yep. That's about what they sound like. And then the Y, check this out. Ugh, that. Yeah, that is gross. So, what I've discovered is, yeah, it's kind of really hard to see because I got it all lubed up. I was trying some stuff out. But I'm pretty sure that x-axis ball screw, or the nut, either one, is worn out. Now, a couple months ago, I noticed some of my parts, the holes, were a little oblong. And I don't know if this is going to show up or not. I don't know, can you see how that's not exactly round kind of in the top here and in the bottom you can actually see you can see where right there that line is where the machine still thinks it's moving in this direction but it's not um, so I've already had the ball screw out well I've had the nut off and screwed it back so I could see it once and it's got a double nut so they're tightened together to do what they do and I noticed that it had a little bit of play in it I could pull them apart so I used a feeler gauge figured out how much the gap was got me some shim stock pulled the nut apart put the shim stock in tighten it back down and everything was great before I had just over 20 thousandths of um, lost travel in the Y. After I put my shim in it, I was down to 7,000, which is still a lot, but way better than, I think it was 22 is what I had. Now that was about two months ago, and the other day I was making some parts, noticed I didn't have real circles, checked it again, and I'm back up to about 18, 19,000. Took it apart, added another shim, and within days, I was back to like 10,000 again. So my guess is either the screw is bad or more likely the balls inside the nut are shot. Either way, um, it's not good. So I say all that to say I got to replace the ball screw on the Y axis. I have two challenges with that. One, I've got this homemade surround on here to keep my cooling in. Don't really want to take that off. I can get to it from underneath. Wow, you couldn't see anything at all, could you? I can get to it from underneath. Now well, there's the ball screw. The other challenge is this machine 
is right up against the wall. And there is some built-in stuff here that it just it's gonna be a challenge to get back there. But my hope is my hope is I can get my little coolant tank out from under here. Put a board or something down here and just slide on back and get it from underneath. And hope the thing doesn't fall on me. I don't think it will. I guess if it does, then suddenly it's not my problem anymore. Um, anyway, so that's the plan. Not 100% positive this has to come off for removal. But the pictures of the new one doesn't show that as already being mounted. So I'm guessing I need it for the new one anyway. So we'll go ahead and get that off of there. I'm going to have a nice organized set of Allen keys. So I just got to hunt and peck till I find one. Oh, are you serious? First try? Nice. Nice. I was digging through my, my drawer Allen keys. First one fit. There we go. You guys can see it's the back side of my hand. There we go. Ow! Alright. Okay. Cool. See, I don't know if that's the ball screw or if it's the uh, the gift. Do a little, a little pry bar action. Get a little, a little leverage on it here. I hope it's the ball screw because if it's the gift. Changing a ball screw is not going to fix that. Don't try this at home, kids. There we go. Yeah, I don't think it's the give because look at all that play I still got. Look at all that. All right, Matt. Stand still. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm getting about a quarter inch out here. That is a problem for another day. Alright, next is going to be to get the ball screw out which is down there which you can't see Let me get some light down there alright that help? there we go as you can see not only have I had it out but I've also lost a couple of the cap screws so I'll put the new one in I'll see if I can find it hopefully find the ones I lost but at the very least find some alright mind your ears
one. Almost. What's going on there? get too carried away. I'll do the lube here. Oh no. I can't see. Oh, okay. Couldn't see it, but we got it. Get the rest of me under there. I'm gonna get my cool coolant tank out. So, uh, oh, I'm not laying in that either. Coolant tank out and clean the floor up, and I will bring you back in once I take care of that. That's what I need to get into. You can see there's not a lot of room back here. Uh, a smart person would have probably cracked open the manual <laughs> to see what all tools he needed. But I do not make that claim. And I just brought everything. So, I'm pretty sure that motor's got to come off. If for no other reason, just so it's out of the way. But I think, I think the ball screw goes out this way. Guess we're gonna find out. Well, it can't go out this way with the nut on it because it won't fit through. Won't fit through there. So we're gonna assume. Okay, we're gonna assume it goes out that way. So maybe we can get away with just taking off this door and the coupler. So, 
I don't even know if you can see from where you are. I hope you can. But I guess if you can't, you don't have hands anyway, so what's the big deal? But let's get some light in here, man. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, that's stupid. Right. So I guess it's perfect for me. take this block off, but probably make life a whole lot simpler. Guess if I take it off, I can clean it and mount the ball screw to it while it's out. easier if I took those bearings out. It's not just getting this one out, it's getting the next one back in. Oh man, I think this, shoot, this front piece of aluminum is going to have to go so close. I think that is the key. Close about three inches. All right, this front piece has got to come off. Bummer. All right, right there is where I'm hitting. I am not taking all of this off. I'm gonna hole saw me a hole right there, and I'm gonna cover it right back up when I'm done. 
coolant doesn't normally get down in here anyway because of the cover that goes here. So, uh, alright, that's the plan. Alright, that should do the trick. Let's see. would work but the ball screws in the way so that's uh we gotta we gotta advance up hi there how you doing we gotta advance this ball screw some Am I going the right way? Oh, I'm stupid. I'm going the wrong way. <sighs> Why do I even get up some days? Am I doing it again? I'm doing it again! What is wrong with me? position to work in. Especially when your back's killing you.
so, so close. This is definitely tighter towards this end. Probably because of the shells. I'm gonna guess the middle of the ball screw gets worn out faster than the ends. So here's obviously the old ball screw out of the machine and just showed up my new ball screw. This new one is beautiful. Look at this thing. Both have the same number stamped on. Oh, wait a minute. Same number, except this is the O2A, O2B. I'm sure that doesn't mean much of anything. Wait a minute. This one's about an inch longer at the tail end. Other than that, it looks pretty much the same. That shouldn't hurt us though, because that's the end that flops around free. Uh, but, let's see. Let's see if you can hear this. This is the one I took out. That sounds terrible. I haven't done this yet. I just opened it up. Let's see. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't hear that one at all. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, this one's done. Just complete toast. My Y-axis way cover got worn out one time, and I went to order one, and they didn't have one. It was on back order. I kept using the machine. Bellows finally came in. Too lazy to put it on. And that, it probably went like that for about three months. And that's probably where a lot of this rust came from. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Could just be because it's eight years old and worn out. So I gotta get these two things moved over and then we'll uh, get ready to put it in the machine. Hopefully I can get this thing uh, dialed in and get the machine fired back up. I got stuff to make so let's just do it. I got the bumper and stop moved over from the other ball screw and I made this slot just a little bit taller 
make it easier to get uh, get that thing in there. Hopefully, actually, I might end up having to take this end plate off too. Not sure. Um, I don't think I'm gonna take you down there with me. Install is just the reverse of pulling it out. If something interesting happens, obviously, I'll bring you in. Um, but yeah, so uh, see you in a few. Well, I got the ball screw back in. And I was right, making that slot a little bit taller. And also taking off the front cover for the, uh, the, the metal piece of the wave cover. Just tilting that out of the way made a huge difference. But check this out. Yeah. That sounds compared to before. Yeah, it's much better. Okay, so let's check our backlash. I've gone through and adjusted the ball screw multiple times, and I got it about as tight as I can get it without going overboard. All right, let's bring that up to 10. We will zero out the y-axis. And when we bring it back to five, all right, we got 11, 11, eight. So we're about six thousandths, seven thousandths of backlash. Which isn't ideal. I don't think it's in the ball screw anymore. Because even when you uh, put this thing on thousands increment and move it, you can see the motor moving, the ball screw moving, everything's moving. It's just not transferring up here like it should. And part of that, I think, is the y axis gib. Um, I actually think it's probably banana shaped because of all the all the wear and tear. So I'm gonna try to adjust that out as much as I can. Um, maybe slightly thicker shims <coughs> on each end, uh, and we're gonna run with it. Nothing I make, nothing I make requires that extreme accuracy down to um, basically just over the thickness of a sheet of paper so I think we're gonna be okay we'll do a couple test cuts and make adjustments as necessary but I, th I think we're gonna be alright so I still gotta button up the covers and do a few other things but she is ready to go back to work y-axis ball screw replaced actually it wasn't that hard even with this thing being up against the wall so that's it. See you next time.